The ANC's sixth national policy conference is underway at the Nazarek Expo Center in Johannesburg. It's an important framework for the party's 55th national conference, where it elects its leadership. The 10 core documents outline its policy approach on matters that the party deems important. Let's take you to Nazrek now, and we are joined by watchdog host Vuyo Mvoko and political editor Mzwandile Mbeje. Uh, Vuyo and Mzwandile, good evening to you. I know that you're going to be handling and holding things down uh, there at Nazrek. But as an opening starter, let's just talk about the hierarchy of priorities in the ANC's policy document. Uh, and Vuyo, in a way, it seems to me to be a metaphor for the ANC's core focus that out of 10, economic recovery is number nine and balance of forces is number one. What's your assessment of the way this document's been designed? Well, uh, Iman, they speak to uh, the enormous challenges that the ANC is currently facing. And uh, in his opening address, uh, ANC President Cyril Ramaphosa had this to say about uh, the state of the party and the challenges it's facing as it approaches this uh, 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 particular conference. In the fulfillment, comrades, of the task of transformation, the unity and the cohesion of our movement is a priority. The ANC today is at its weakest and most vulnerable since the advent of democracy. Our weaknesses are evident in the distrust, the disillusionment, the frustration that is expressed by many people towards our movement and our government. They are reflected in our support in the last local government elections, where for the first time we fell below 50% of the national vote. Our weaknesses are reflected in many of our branches which are not involved in the lives of our communities, but are activated only for the purpose of electing delegates for conferences or nominating candidates for public office. Our weaknesses are evident in the distance between our public representatives and the people that they are meant to serve. Perhaps most striking, our weaknesses are evident in the divisions within our ranks. We are a divided movement. And these are not divisions about policies or ideology. And I'm sure that our discussions will testify to that. But they are driven by competition for positions, by the competition and contestations of structures and the pursuit of access to public resources and patronage as well. These divisions manifest themselves in gatekeeping, yes, even in vote buying, and the manipulation of organizational processes. These divisions are manifested through all these challenges and problems that continue to debilitate our organization from serving the people of our country effectively. These weaknesses in our organizations, however, are felt beyond our structures. We can see the impact of our divisions and faults in our alliance partners and in formations of broader democratic movement. We can see how our divisions have also weakened governance in many areas have undermined public institutions and have hampered maintenance of infrastructure and provision of services. These were among the challenges identified at the 54th National Conference and which informed the firm decision of that conference to embark on a program of fundamental renewal and rebuilding. Indeed, uh, those weaknesses, those faults, those problems, those challenges uh, that he spoke about on full display uh, here uh, today, Iman, starting 
right early in the morning. I um, mean, we rushed to be here for a seven o'clock briefing that never took place at all. The conference itself was scheduled to start at nine o'clock. It only started at uh, 11. Of course, uh, the moment of the moment then uh, uh, seized uh, at the moment with uh, the, some of the comments that he made, among them the one uh, we played. But before we get to the rest of what President Cyril Ramaphosa had to say as he uh, uh, implored the members of his party to do the right things, to make sure that this conference is the success that they hope uh, it is going to be. The host chairperson uh, of uh, the ANC, that is the chairperson of the ANC here uh, in Gauteng, Panyaza Lesufi, set the tone by imploring de de delegates to really keep their eye uh, on the ball. And I'm going to uh, start this conversation uh, uh, with uh, Mzwandile, our uh, political editor. And that's exactly what Panyaza Lesufi did, Mzwandile, isn't it, to say, Whatever happens, whatever attitudes people may have towards one another, whatever issues they feel so strongly about, they should keep their eye on the ball. In fact, Vuyo, um, a very good evening to you. If you then looked at the entirety of the situation, they realized that they're in deep trouble. So even the mutedness of the delegates, for me, shows that they realize that they're in trouble. So basically what they are doing is that these differences, if we don't resolve them now, so that will be the end of us. I think that was the mood and the spirit in which the chairperson was really looking to this. Actually, the other person that really struck it was uh, the president of, the, of COSATU, who basically said, as you sit here as the ANC, your own members are outside um, uh, picketing. It means there's something wrong you're doing. Even Solima Paile did the same. He said, Actually, I've just been called now that I need to address why was I not told in time. What does that tell you, Vuyo? The House may not necessarily be in that order in which they want. Then, of course, came uh, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa with his uh, keynote uh, address, raising quite a number uh, uh, of things. Oh, yes. Um, for me, when he said, we are a party divided, I think he summed it up, uh, Vuyo. He summed it up. Because when you look at these difficulties, when you look at um, the 2021 local government elections, when we look at the internal ructions within the ANC, when we look at those public fights within the ANC, it tells you one story, that they are the party divided. Not only that, most of the municipalities um, are under their control or were under their control. That's where service delivery has not been happening. Why, Vuyo? Because of either bickering, fighting for resources, they are the very people in charge, but somehow they are not able to manage that because they are so focused on fighting, then the people are suffering on the ground. Perhaps that 2021 government, uh, local government elections was a reminder to say, we've given you power, but we are thinking otherwise come 2024. But none of the things, I mean, he was saying really were new. new. <laughs> you know, whether it was talking about, you know, the reasons people uh, have lost confidence in the ANC, whether it was talking about the internal, uh, I mean, wrangles, whether it was talking about uh, people getting into the politics, joining the ANC and doing things because they want to ha have access to uh, resources or to power. None of that was actually new. In fact, um, <laughs> as I was sitting, listening to the president uh, implore delegates to really be serious about this, something came to mind. I said, actually, most of these things, we've heard about them before. We know them so too well. Here is the problem, which I think they've realized. They are not implementing some of the very good policies, by the way, that they may have. Why they are not doing that? Because they are focused on who should come in so that he is able to set me and then forgetting completely about the commandate of their party. The commandate of their party is very simple, is to serve the people. That is why they call themselves the leader of society. This is the leader of society which somehow is consumed in internal battles to the detriment of the greater majority. In fact, the former president Mbeki at, some, you know, at one of the gatherings basically said, if the ANC is not able to get its house in order because the society looks up to it, it means it's in trouble. I and mean, right now, 
I mean, we don't need to say much. Okay, and of course, a point that Cyril Ramaphosa made, Iman, uh, towards uh, uh, the end of his speech was that being a leader of society is not something the ANC can only claim. It's something they will have to earn. And uh, just uh, uh, throwing forward, what is happening now is they're busy adopting credentials. Once they are done with adopting credentials, which is a closed session at the moment, plenary is going to start, and that's when they are going to look at uh, things like strategy and tactics, and that's where the ANC looks internally at its strengths and weaknesses and the things that it needs to do to strengthen itself so that it can then begin to do the sort of things that South Africans expect it or want it uh, to do. For now, though, we're going to hand back uh, to you. William Zwandile, thank you very much. We'll be back at uh, the Nazrik. Uh, uh well, the, the Nasrik Plaza, in a way, which is where uh, the ANC is hosting this political, I mean, this policy conference, which ends on Sunday. Let's uh, look a little closer at some of the issues that Vuyo and Mzwandile outlined there. And I'm joined by political analyst Rebone Tao. Good evening to you and welcome. I want to reflect on that initial soundbite that we played from the president there. And it goes directly or invokes part of the policy document. It's the point that deals with organizational renewal. The ANC talking about red flags, uh, you know, around what it terms the high number of uh, political careerists who joined the party after 1994 to further their own aims. Um, and, you know, the fact that it's causing so many reputational headaches for the party. Has the specter of corruption largely been caused by these newer members, or is it the old guard, um, in a way, uh, more than you know, the new guard that's been driving some of the big damage that the ANC ex has experienced over the last two decades? Uh, good evening, uh, I mean, uh, and good evening to the viewers at home. Um, the ANC finds itself in a very difficult position, and I agree with the president. I mean, if you look at the patterns, you know, um, of the different conference of the ANC, you look at the 1991 conference, um, the Stellenbosch the, um, African conference, you can see the numbers, how they've been growing. And more especially when you go to Polokwan and post Polokwan, you know. Um, and the pro biggest problem with the ANC is a recruitment process. It's, a, it's an open check. Anyone can just become a member today and by the way into leadership position. So um, the NC will have to, in terms of the organizational renewal, look at what are the criteria that they need to look into when they recruit new members within the party, you know, uh, uh, vetting even those members, you know, within the party because indeed a lot of people have joined the ANC because uh, they see it as, a, as an easy way um, to getting a, a comfortable life. But also when you look at also the economy, you know, um, and, and you look at most provinces, uh, it's only Gauteng and I think uh, Western Cape, you know, where you've got private sector in, in, in the main and other provinces, they only depend uh, whether on local government uh, or, or on, on, on provincial government. So they only see that as their way into getting uh, jobs in other provinces. Let's come then, you know, for, for the entirety of this weekend, there will be a significant focus on people who are interested in what is happening in Nazrek. Um, what in your mind is the bigger picture? Provide just a sort of snap political picture on why this policy conference is important not only to the ANC but also to South Africans at large. I think this is not the first policy conference of the ANC. Every year we know that the ANC, um, when it goes to conference, it goes to the policy conference, which is the sixth one. But just to start by saying this is a very different policy conference of the ANC. Historically, there used to have BGMs where branches will have delegates going to conference to represent uh, the views of the branches. But this time around, the ANC national uh, leadership allocated numbers to provinces and said, OK, this province probably give us 100 delegates, this province give us 20 delegates. So, And when you speak to some of the members within the ANC, they feel like they were taking part in this um, discussion documents at a branch level, but now they're not even given an opportunity to, 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 to go and represent the views of the branches. And only this last week that most of them actually knew over the weekend that, um, uh, for an example, I know in Johannesburg, one of the zones, uh, one of the branch secretaries was called to say in this particular zone, only one delegate will be going to the, to the, to the policy conference. But I think some of the things that we'll be looking at... But hold on, so, so let's just tease that point out. I mean, was this a, in your mind then tantamount to a strategic selection of people who would be in the room uh, to kind of manage the way it runs with less disruption, with less, you know, pushback? I, I think so. And I, I've been saying to people, I mean, this is not going to give us a sense of what's going to happen in December. Because normally, in June already, 
when you look at the police conference in plenary, then you get a sense of what is going to happen in December, who's got the numbers. So right now, this is not a true reflection. So I think they were indeed trying to manage, although some of the leaders, when I spoke to them of the ANC, they are raising the issue of money, but they knew all along that the policy conference yeah. is coming and they did not, not even go to the National General Council. Well, let's, let's end this particular round by talking about ANC chairperson Gwede Mantashe, you know, poo-pooing plans by some in the party to fight the step-aside rule, saying that he was certain it would remain as it is by the end of the conference on Sunday. Um, what impact do you think the mixed messages, particularly around the step-aside rule, are going to have on the debate on this issue as it plays out? I think the biggest problem with the ANC um, is that Everything they do is fictional. And that's why some have raised concern about the step aside rule that it seems to be targeting certain people. Uh, if you are not uh, within the dominating faction or the president's faction, then uh, you might not be told to step aside. And I'll give an example. Um, the deputy minister of, of defense, of, uh, of finance, yes, he was not charged according to Rule 25.7 of the Constitution. But he appeared before the Integrity Committee, and the Inte Integrity Committee said he should step aside based on um, the allegations that were there that he used the hogs to deal with his own personal issues, you know. And he, he ignored that, you know, and it was not enforced on him that he needs to step aside. So, um, but I still feel that Scrapping it, it will be the biggest mistake for the ANC mm. if they're speaking about renewal, if they want to be seen in society, dealing with the, some of the challenges that the organization faces. It, look, it, in a way, it seems to have, uh, you know, a lot of the recommendations or the policies have inbuilt a rev an evolutionary nature to them. We saw the step aside rule first promulgated in 2017 with the, um, you know, with the charges against Ace Mahashule, for example, and the way it was implemented against them. The ANC seeking this high level counsel on whether this is constitutional or not. And there are these dilemmas that lead to, you know, the further sophistication, if for, for want of a better term, of how rules like the step-aside rule uh, need to be interpreted. But we'll come back in discussion later on to talk about the, the content of the policy document, some of the strategic changes uh, that the ANC is, is, is um, planning on making, and how, as Gwede Mantashe said, this is not a place to create new, new policy. The opportunity for that only happens uh, at the end of the year or much later. Rebone, thank you very much so far for just setting the scene for us, and you'll stay with me um, for the rest of the program. Rebone Tao, who is joining us um, to share some political analysis on the ongoing policy conference.